it going? It's Elena, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm bringing you guys another episode of Buzzed In. If you've seen my videos, you know the drill. But basically, I love to film apartment tours here in New York and highlight people's style with their decorating and talk a little bit about the local neighborhood. And today's fun, because we're checking out a new neighborhood. We're checking out Long Island City. So I came across Nick, who we're gonna be seeing today, just on Instagram Reels. I was just scrolling and I came across this beautiful apartment and clicked on his feed and saw that he lives in Long Island City and his feed is full of all these gorgeous photos and reels. So I promptly slid in those DMs. I was like, hey, can I show up your apartment? So I'm so excited to see more of his apartment. And of course, before we head on over, let's talk a little bit about the history of Long Island City. So Long Island City is a city in the borough of Queens within New York City. There's also a region of suburbs outside of New York City called Long Island that are composed of a bunch of small, numerous towns. So Long Island City actually existed as its own independent city until around 1898 when Queens was annexed into New York City. It became quite the manufacturing hub throughout the 19th century and then saw a decline in around the 1940s or so as did a lot of New York City when it came to industrial work. And with time, I'm learning this is an age old New York City tale, similar with Dumbo, which is the last buzzed in I did. Once like the industrial market of that neighborhood starts to decline, there are all these massive factory spaces and then a lot of artists start to flock to the neighborhoods. It wasn't until 2001 that the neighborhood was actually rezoned from a industrial neighborhood to a residential neighborhood. So within that period of time, there are quite a few New Yorkers who have moved into the area and are calling it now home. Also, you may have heard of the Long Island Railroad, which does run throughout Long Island City. And it's actually the busiest commuter train in all of North America, which I thought was interesting. So before we head on over to Nick's apartment, I wanna say thank you to today's sponsor. So thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. If you're unfamiliar with what BetterHelp is, it's essentially an online counseling service that offers incredible therapy with licensed professionals. I've been using them for a long time now and I am a big fan of the services they provide. It's so important to prioritize your mental health and doing something like therapy is a great way to work on that. BetterHelp will essentially assess your needs and match you with a licensed professional. You can start talking to somebody in less than 48 hours, which is incredible. There is a broad range of therapists too, over 20,000, which I think is incredible because you know there may not be the right person for you in your local area. And a lot of times offline in-person therapy is traditionally more expensive. And there's financial aid available. It's available worldwide, which is amazing. And you can log on at any time and start talking to the therapist. So definitely visit BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, Dot com and you can start taking charge of your mental health and join the over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health today. Also, you can get 10% off your first month with my code and everything will be linked down below as well. So thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And now let's head to Nick's apartment. Hey, come on in. Hey, I'm Nick Lowry and welcome to my Long Island City apartment. Our apartment's $3,200 a month. Uh, it is a studio alcove, uh, though could technically be a one bed. When you come in, uh, there's this kind of long gallery hallway uh, with the bathroom, uh, bedroom, and then of course kitchen and living space. Uh, in the bathroom, a kind of cool thing is any outdoor furniture actually works really well in a bathroom as well, just because it's fine with moisture or other things like that. Other than that, nothing too crazy. The rest of the space is definitely much more interesting. Down the hallway to our bedroom over here, legally speaking, it can't be a one bed because it doesn't have a window or exit from it, but for all intents and purposes, it's a one bedroom. For our bed, we actually have the Floyd bed, which is really cool. We've had it for a few years now, really, really love it. On the back wall here, we actually have two of these uh, Floyd wardrobe systems. In the middle here, we have a bunch of all of our Alto stools uh, that are really cool. They work as a kind of a great side table as well as if we need additional seating, if we have people over or whatever the case may be. On top of that, we have an 
Isamu Noguchi Akari Light sculpture. We also have another one up here. In the Long Island City neighborhood, uh, there is the Noguchi Museum. And luckily enough, we're able to buy some of the uh, light sculptures from the museum and they look great in the space and kind of fill out everything nicely. On our back wall here, we have a really cool rounded mirror that's from CB2. It just kind of makes a nice like kind of framed moment from kind of whatever angle you're looking at it. As well as since our bedroom doesn't have a window, it actually bounces in a lot of light from the hallway. Peloton over here. Uh, which is great. My fiance actually won this in a work auction when they moved into a new work building, which is great for me. Kind of going into the rest of the space, I work from home on my end, so because of that, I have my desk set up here. Uh, for my fiance, she has her industrial sewing machine. She's a menswear designer. Currently, she works at Kith, but also does some side projects on the side on her end. This really cool organizer that's from Vitra. It's an utensilo organizer. It's kind of like all these little modular pockets, which is great for like craft stuff, general things. Uh, and helps kind of keep our setup nice and tidy. Kind of going into the rest of the space, over here we have our kitchen, which we try and keep pretty simple. When we were looking at a space, we wanted something that had a large size like kitchen island, uh, as well as like a decent uh, setup overall. My baby, which is a uh, Rocket Espresso Apartmento. This is something I bought back in November or so from a really cool online coffee distributor and company, Whole Latte Love. One of the other cool factors that we really liked when we were looking at apartments and specifically this apartment was uh, this kind of lower table edition that's actually on the island. So instead of having um, bar stools, we're able to have uh, table height seating, which is great because there's much cooler options. And yeah, this kind of starts to get into a lot of like my obsessions, which are definitely cool furniture. With it, it's a lot of uh, modernist influences throughout our space. These chairs are really cool. They're Mies van der Rohe MR10 side chairs. Uh, these are produced by Knoll, this particular set was from uh, 1982, though the original design dates back to the 30s. These were actually sourced by Studio 26, who is another vintage dealer on Instagram. We really love looking at vintage exhibition posters because it's a really cool way to have original pieces from artists because exhibition posters were usually by uh, galleries, foundations, uh, museums, for exhibitions going on on specific artists. This Hantai one was actually from uh, Foundation Might, uh, which is really cool. So this one dates back to 1968, I believe, as well as this uh, Matisse one, which was uh, also from a really cool gallery. That one was in Geneva. Uh, from the 80s. Uh, both of those we sourced off of First Dibs. This sofa is really cool. It was a Craigslist find from a few years ago. We also have this Jean Prouvé Potence lamp, which is really cool. So it's a swing arm lamp by Vitra, which is just a really cool, fun piece. It's great to be able to move around lighting. My fiance is definitely uh, the plant mom in our household. Uh, so these are all her babies. She collects a lot of more like rare plants. So because of that, we also have like a humidifier here for them, just to kind of like keep moisture and humidity up. I'm sure some plant people are gonna be like, Oh shit. And then kind of going over to our coffee table in the middle here. One thing that we always get comments about in our space, either from friends or from people on Instagram, is our Salam philodendron here. This is a really cool candle holder that was actually designed by Colin King and Menu Space. This vintage ashtray, which is by Yoshitomo Nara from 2002. Uh, that was like another eBay find. And then we have our bookshelves over here. These are actually another thing that we always get asked about. There are actually three ladder books shelves, so they're three independent ones, but we kind of uh, have them all mounted together to create more of a wall unit. We also keep our bar cart kind of thing on our bookshelf, which is a great kind of New York tip rather than having a standalone bar cart or whatever the case may be. Another thing I forgot to touch on is actually this uh, pillow, which is really cool. This was actually a uh, recent gift from my fiance. It's a pillow by Bodhi. Bodhi's a cool New York designer, uh, so you're able to actually submit uh, image references and different things like that. And then their team will actually uh, do illustrations based off those image refs. So we have like 
a vase that we have with like chrysanthemums. We have yuzu, our betta fish, a uh, tram from one of our trips when we went to Taiwan uh, right before the pandemic. And then on the other side, we have a linzer tart because uh, my grandma always makes linzer tarts and just like classic Austrian, super, super good, as well as like some playing cards, some Polaroids, other cards, just kind of like a fun little sentimental piece. Yuzu's a cool little betta fish. Uh, we've had him for probably about a year and a half or so, um, but is featured on our pillow, just as kind of our first pet together. On the side over here, we actually have a Sori Anagi butterfly stool, another piece that's produced by Vitra. I think it was like 250 bucks, whereas like retail on them is like nearing a grand. So I head growth at a telecom startup here in the city. I live in this apartment with my fiance, Anne, uh, who we've been together for about seven years. I grew up in New Jersey, she grew up in SF. Both of us met here in New York. We've been in this space for about a year and a half or so, and luckily are gonna be here for about two and a half more years. We focus a lot on materiality. So in our space, most of our pieces are modernist or mid-century. Um, most of the modernist pieces are dark leather, chrome, everything else when it comes to like wood pieces or other things are primarily uh, walnut or darker, which uh, matches like flooring, everything like that. We try and keep the material palette really simple. And then of course, books, art, plants kind of add pops of color to everything. Originally, Long Island City was uh, very industrious. Uh, so most of the buildings in the neighborhood here are newer than about 2007. So it's a very, very new neighborhood in that sense. Oldest one uh, was like 1996 or so, which is the oldest like residential high rise around here, which is crazy, especially for New York City standards. But because of that, there's a lot of like industrial roots and everything like that. So at the waterfront here by the gantry is where kind of the old gantry towers are for uh, ships and everything like that, as well as the Pepsi Cola sign because they used to have the bottling factory here. Very interesting place, a lot of uh, really cool art galleries and different things like that. Uh, if you go up closer to Astoria, of course, Noguchi Museum, the Sculpture Garden, the entire area over here, there's also an entire block of pretty much all just phenomenal restaurants, which is super important to us. We are definitely uh, foodies and also easy access to the seven train going into uh, Queens for great food is always the best. Uh, so always have kind of grown up around the city, uh, been in the city, so always familiar with it. If you don't live in New York, it's difficult to describe how quiet the city is in a sense. Like everyone is kind of walking, doing their own thing, minding their own business. And if you don't want to in interact with a single soul, you don't have to. Everything's accessible, everything's open. If you want to kind of go and do anything, you have the opportunities to do that. If you need groceries at 2 a.m., easy. As well as just like how much cool stuff's constantly happening in the city.